Welcome back. One member of the state Senate has been a major voice on water policy in Texas for several years. Horseshoe Bay Senator Troy Frazier joins me in the studio now. Senator, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So I want to talk a little bit about LCRA. A lot of people are mad that they have been proposing these uh, rate hike increases. I mean, what are we talking? We say 16% for cities and customers and then maybe more than 90% for some farmers? Yeah, that's just a start. Then they're going to go up another 3% every year. It'll be, they're projecting about a 31% increase. And that's already on top of the fact they are the highest rates in the state for water of any major basin right now. Uh, they add another 31% on that. They will be f by far the highest. And uh, I'm, I'm opposing that. I'm, I'm opposed to the rate increase because it's not necessary. Yeah, they say it's because of, you know, skyrocketing costs, but has this just been a bad business decision for a while? Yeah, they, you know, we have to recognize the fact that these, the lakes that serve us were built in 1938. They've been paid for for a long time. They haven't built any new facilities, so any, you know, and their, their cost of the raw material is water from the sky, so there, there's really not a reason that their overhead has gone up except excessive salaries. Uh, it's, it's, I, we have to take note of the fact that... Uh, the new general manager, uh, he's got a huge salary. They paid the last general manager $600,000 to leave. And then the new general manager has hired uh, at least five, maybe six people, over 250000 And it's interesting that this all happened as they were announcing a rate increase. Yeah, and I want to come back to those salaries in a minute. But first off, the rate increase would not help pay for new projects. It's just for the cost that they're seeing right now. And I know that they have been talking about even more money needed for a reservoir, right? That is correct. There's a, uh, this is really frustrating for me. I have oversight of all the water in the state, of making sure that we protect everyone's water assets. Yet here in my own backyard, I've got a river authority uh, that basically is not responsible to their customers. They're not responsible to the legislature. And they basically thumb their nose if they've got unlimited authority uh, and you know we have a lot of trouble trying to control what they're doing and uh, it's uh, it's frustrating to me now back to the salaries when we hear about Phil Wilson you know he was the former tax dot director now he's come over to LCRA since February and he's making what four hundred and twenty five thousand dollars now that's more than he was making at TxDOT and it's more than his predecessor at LCRA how do you think he swung that and, and that's not including his bonus that he's going to get there's a uh, he could make as much as I think it's about another third uh, in bonus so yeah that's by far the most they've uh, they've ever paid uh, an executive director uh, and then when he got there obviously he's hired some very expensive people and it's it's a uh, uh, there LCRA uh, has a history of making bad business decisions. They also have had a bloated bureaucracy. You know, as a businessman, I understand very clearly that you never spend more than the revenue they're taking in. Uh, when the revenues are down, they should have cut their expenses, but rather than doing that, they're, they're using the ultimate taxing authority. They're going to go up on rates on people's water. When you do hear about salaries and everything like that, he says that it's a drop in the bucket, those salaries. But, you know, you have things like that reservoir I heard was going to cost $200 million. Does it sound like a drop in the bucket when you hear more than $400,000 for a salary? No, and, and you really have to examine the, the real numbers here. The, the total amount of water that LCRA spends every year is only, you know, they, the money coming in from water, $32 million. This year, just for this new project, they've already spent almost $35 million just planning this new project. So it, it's, you know, it's not a drop in the bucket. Uh, the rate increase that they're proposing, interestingly, is about the same amount of money as the new salaries that they took on. Uh, I find that a little suspicious that it just happens that we have to have a rate increase when they start paying people all these big salaries. When it comes to LCRA, one of the big things we keep hearing about is this community of Spicewood Beach. It keeps being brought up year after year after year because they've been trucking water in. I know there's, uh, you know, something going on between Corex and LCRA, but why is this community continuously dealing with this matter and there's not a permanent problem, a uh, permanent solution? If you'll allow me, I'm going to back into this. We, we would not be having the problem at Spicewood if LCRA were managing the, the, the lakes like they should. Uh, in 2011, when we were in the driest and the hottest period that the state has ever seen during that year, even though their forecaster said we were in a very, very severe drought, uh, they released 400 
164,000 acre feet to the downstream agriculture interest, even though they knew that by doing that, that it was going to, to might be a problem for the lakes. That's three years water supply for the city of Austin that they sent downstream even though they knew we, we were in the hottest and the driest year ever. Uh, if they had not done that, the lakes would be half full now. Water would be all the way up to Spicewood and we wouldn't be having to address it. So uh, from a starting point, this should never have happened. Uh, but unfortunately, the people of Spicewood are constantly fighting because their, their water pipe doesn't get down to where the water is. Uh, even though they're having a problem, we're going to start seeing this with other communities. Uh, Cedar Park, uh, I was out looking at their intact valve recently. They've had to extend it on down in order to get to the water, but if it goes down much more, they're going to be out of the, of, of the, the uh, being able to, their intake being in the water. Uh, I'm really concerned that this summer we're going into, if it's hot and if the, the w weather patterns hold, uh, there's a real good chance the lakes are going to get the lowest they have ever been in history, and it is entirely because of mismanagement of LCRA. We have about a minute left, and talking about communities that could use help with water infrastructure, the legislature uh, just passed the Water Infrastructure Fund, and voters approved it. $2 billion set aside so communities could help build new water projects. How's that going so far? Yeah, going ex extremely well. We're, I'm very pleased with what's going on over the Water Development Board. Uh, I was actually with the, them two days ago. Uh, they've been going out into communities, explaining to the communities how uh, they can help them. In the past, Water Development Board was nothing more they, they were reactionary. They were like a bank that wait till people ask for money. I've asked them to go out, meet with the public, try to be proactive, to be user friendly, to help communities understand how the state of Texas can help them with their infrastructure needs. And we actually, the, we, we have about $8 billion that is available for, uh, to loan to communities. It, those are loans. They will have to pay them back. That fund will stay at the same size or grow. Uh, but we think we're going to be able to take care of our water needs in the state of Texas, we hope for the next 50 years without ever coming back for other any other money from the legislature. All right, Senator, thank you for being with us. I appreciate it. Josh, thank you. So the lack of water also hitting local businesses in Central Texas. Ahead, we visit Lake Buchanan on State of Texas In-Depth.